Greetings exiles, let's make a new magic find character. But this time I decided to start on a new account, completely without any currency or atlas progress. A real zero. I really wonder if I can make a hero out of him. Since corrupting fever isn't the best skill to complete a campaign, I decided to start with splitting steel and switch to spectral helix at level 12. Pretty boring, but fast and efficient. Finally, it's time to pick the best ascendancy in the game. The acts were pretty dull and I didn't have any lucky drops, so I decided to check out Rogue Harbor because my currency stash is totally empty and I need chaos orbs to buy some starting gear. So let's do some heist. This is what my currency stash tab looks like now. And a little trade. Now that's much better. I think this should be enough to go shopping for my first time. Saffle's frame is a good entry-level shield. Hemophilia is the best loves for us. Mark of Submission. And the first MF gear is Venter's Gamble. To make the process of farming experience and completing Atlas a little more fun. The Poet's Pin is another unique item that is a must for us and makes the build much more comfortable and enjoyable. We will also need some new body armor. I could have bought six link at this point, but decided to stop at five links. And the final purchases are the new boots. I think we had a pretty good shopping trip and now we need to finish the campaign. Then I'll make a res pick and we'll finally start playing the real path of exile. That's great. Now we can do a res pick and change my skills and gear. Well then, I think I'm ready for my first map. I can't wait to see what the corrupting fever champion is. Pretty good, and that great explosion sound. So satisfying. I like this build already. But we have a small problem, my currency stash tab is empty again. So I will now farm more currency, experience, and at the same time I will complete my atlas. My initial atlas looked like this. I decided to focus on Kirag missions to speed up completing my Atlas and some June missions because it's a good source of experience and I need to unlock some crafting bench recipes. As well as a heist because I need the extra contracts since I was planning on going back to Rogue Harbor because it's a pretty good way to earn currency in the beginning. It might not be the best strategy to start with but it's generally fine for me. After spending some time on the maps and collecting the right amount of contracts I went to a heist. Wow, this is my first loot goblin. How boring and small. And my first divine orb. I think I'm done with that heist, because that should be enough starter money for my next step, which is to buy seven Tujin log books. And now my journey becomes an expedition. After I finished all the logbooks, my currency stash tab was refilled, and I actually doubled my investment. I will not focus on logbooks farming because it is a topic for a separate video, and on YouTube you can find pretty good videos on the subject. Let me just say that now it is only a matter of time before I can get enough currency to make my basic MF. So let's skip the boring part and see what I got after a few hours of expedition farming. This is the picture I like better. Can we not do magic find character and continue law book grinding? I think we can get mage blood very quickly. Okay, I'm kidding. Even though it's a very effective strategy for earning currency, it's very boring and I like magic find better because it's more fun and exciting. So let's go shopping. I think that this amount of currency should have enough for basic equipment. Bisco's leash with all elemental resistances. Second Venter's Gamble. Hemophilia with Curse Enemies with Vulnerability on Hit. Goldworm a must for any MF character. There's also a shield like this. I didn't buy this one because I found it in Heist, but it's worth a few Chaos Orbs. 
almost perfect greed's embrace. Helmet with Pride has 30% increased mana reservation efficiency. Level 3 Enlightened Support. Nice try, bro. Best Scammer. Well, that's better. And I guess we'll be needing a level 3 in power as well. One large cluster and one medium. Roughly like this one. Then we need a couple of jewels with maximum life and physical damage over time multiplier and some useful characteristics. Then we need a new wand. I think we start with something like this. And a timeless jewel. We need to get it with Kaspiro because we want a supreme ostentation. Also don't forget inspired learning. Our mini headhunter. And the final buy is anomalous kinetic blast. A pretty expensive gem, but unfortunately we really need it. If you're on a very tight budget you can skip this one, but then your life sustain will be much worse or you'll sacrifice map clearing speed. Alright, I kinda bought everything I wanted and now let's get to crafting. For starters it's going to be a helmet. Classic alteration spam until we find item rarity. Wow, that's pretty good. Apparently, I'm pretty good at crafting. So the final stage is benchcraft and a double exalted slam. It could have been worse and overall not a bad option. Next we need an amulet and here I will use the same craft method as in the last video. For that we need one amulet with shaper influence and increased quantity of items found, and one amulet with hunter influence and physical damage over time multiplier. Use Awakener's Orb because they're relatively cheap in this league and pray to the gods to get some good amulet. Most importantly, don't forget that the amulet should have exactly one parameter with shaper and hunter influence. Unfortunately, we did not have the most useful characteristics, but for a start this amulet will be useful to us. And in the end, let's do 6 links. Wow! For less than 1000 fusing orbs. Pretty good. Well, I finally have all the items I need, but before I can do magic find I need to get my first void stones. Oh! What have we here? No way. Ashes of the stars. Well, why not? Casually got 30 divine orbs. But I'm not going to sell it and use the currency from its sale to buy equipment for this character. Because it would not be very interesting and ethical. So I'll just leave it there for now. Hey, where's my crystallized omniscience? It's probably a bug of some kind. I'll have to email support and let them fix it. Now that's it. Let's finally change gear and go hunting for loot goblins. I cannot wait to check how this character will handle magic find. As always I will start with tier 11 cemetery. Although this character can also start at tier 14. But I wanted to play a little low level MF. First valuable loot. Really, it's not related to MF, but still nice. Wrong card. It was supposed to be a brother's gift. Some kind of bug again. There's something wrong with my client. Little loot explosion. Overall, I am very happy with this character. As you can see, we have a very fast map clearing. At the same time we have Reap and its Vol version, which help against single targets. Also this character has good defense. According to the POB we have over 35,000 effective HP. It's not an ultimatum defense, but it's something. But our chaos resistance is pretty bad, so avoid monsters that do chaos damage and with poison. Also any damage over time is pretty dangerous for us. Wow, that's pretty unexpected, but nice. As for my Atlas strategy, it's pretty standard. 
its wandering path with Legion, Delirium, and a bit of Breach and Harbingers. I also spent some skill points on Expedition, because I have so many artifacts left and need currency for rerolls. I've done quite a long road, but this is just the beginning. And ahead we have new upgrades, new challenges, and of course new lucky drop. As always, I hope that you liked this video and it was useful, and I will be very grateful for your support. With likes and comments. And of course a subscription. Bye everyone, and see you in new videos.